The Voice of America correspondent Sonny Young speaking to us from Washington at DC. It was fun uh, listening to Sonny Young. What a world of sports. So much going down. Let's come back to the studio now and use the remaining five minutes to just run through everything Sonny Young talked about to Laura, Laura Montaigne. Is here. I, I think I should be singing your name, so I don't ever get it, forget it. <laughs> so it's good to have your sports tonight. Yeah, Austin, good to be back. Awesome, awesome. We're talking about Joshua Miller. When you read about the fight coming together, I know. It's dude. a joke, Austin. It's yeah. a joke. Um, yes, there is a sporting reason why he's doing that bout. Yeah. But I think the economic reason far outweigh the sporting reason, mm. which is he's trying to break into the American market. We know, if you follow boxing well enough, that the American market is yeah, the it biggest is. boxing market in the world. Uh, yeah, he's selling out the O2, he's selling out Wembley Stadium, but it is in America. The pay-per-view there is insane. It's different. It's in a different league entirely. Yes, they do not have arenas as big as the O2 or uh, even uh, Wembley Stadium where you can sell out 90,000, mm -hmm. but they make up the, the numbers in pay-per-view, and I think Joshua wants to tap into that piece. But I don't like the deal because Hey, he promised John to, uh, Dillian White <laughs> right in presence of everybody that he yeah. doesn't get Tyson Fury. He will be doing uh, John Tewala. He will be doing Dillian White. And here he is going ahead to fight the big baby. And, and I'm asking myself, come on, Joshua, give us a proper bout. It's good. If, if I were at the end, I'd probably do the same. Yeah. Get him to get. It's another big payday. Get into the American market with a softer opponent okay. and build the momentum mm. for the day he eventually fights Deontay Wilder. But then I think boxing fans all around the globe will be disappointed yeah, you guys... because he's not doing the big bouts and he's giving uh, everyone more reason to think, hey, Joshua, you're running. No, 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 no. And that's what boxing is all about, um, Tolu. They want the money. And look, Eddie Hearn is very smart. smart. I mean, he's doing it differently after, that way. After seeing Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fight, don't you think Joshua needs more fights also? Yeah, he does uh -huh. need more fights. I think he needs more fights. I always thought he needs a lot of fights. Uh, I didn't think that Tyson Fury would be at the level he was just yet when he faced uh, Deontay Wilder, but he did, and it surprised everybody, including myself. Uh, so, look, I think the heavyweight category, particularly among these three undefeated uh, heavyweights, is the most uh, competitive we've, we've seen in years. I think Joshua needs to get some more bouts, but hey, I think he's ready to take on them too. I mm -hmm. think he's ready. I think the longer he pushes this bout away, the worse it will get for yeah. his reputation. Yeah. I yeah. think he needs to take on one of these two heavyweights mm -hmm. and give the world a proper show. Mm -hmm. Look, people will always underrate his win over Vladimir Klitschko because Vladimir was, you know, visibly... I don't want to hear you say he was yes, finished. He, he wasn't was at the end. That was the champ. And he used to be the champ until Tyson Fury floored him. Of course, him. but we know he how was the, finished. And at 40, he knocked down Joshua. Yes, and ah. he, he, that which should make you think back. If yeah. that was two or five years ago, do you think Joshua will recover? I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. so a better I, Joshua would have prepared for that fight. Uh, yeah, maybe. That. And, and then it came early in Joshua's career, too. Yeah. I think that was the 18th professional bout. And it was good and, for and, him. And it was good and for got him. So, to this so level. That is, what, that is mm. what gave him, brought him to this level. He is. So he yeah. can now go so from that bout to fans. some... Boxing fans, bout. sorry. 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 Joshua needs the money. He needs the experience. <laughs> he needs the exposure. He needs to make um, penetration into the American market. And that's what Eddie Hearn and his team are trying to do. Definitely, we want a Joshua Wilder fight. It might happen. Yes, it's boxing. It might happen where we want it to, but definitely, somehow, it's definitely going to happen. One of the things Sonny Young talked about was uh, the latest FIFA ranking before going on this break. Let me just let you know that the Super Eagles of Nigeria, they have dropped two places in the first FIFA world ranking for the year. And I'm here, so they, yeah, yeah, whatever. I know, that's the feeling. The team dropped to the 46th position in the world with a total, uh, total points of 1,427, and they are now fourth in Africa. The Taranga Lions of Senegal remains the continent's best playing footballing nation, but dropped a sport to the 24th in the world. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, it will be all about the under-20 AFCON taking place in Niger. Former Flying Eagles coach John Obu is standing by. We will do the analysis together. Don't go anywhere. Stay.
Welcome back sports tonight on your award-winning sports loving channels television. We're having fun talking sports and I want to invite you to be part of the fun. You can talk to us, ask us anything, questions, comments, suggestions as regards what's going on in our world of sports and I'm going to entertain it. I love it when you get involved. Now let's talk about uh, the, the under-20 AFCON. I just can't wait for the FIFA competition. I keep trying to say FIFA. It's the under-20 AFCON. Nigeria is competing in that one in Niger. They're in Group A. They're on top of the table, but they need to win Niger, the host country, when they take them uh, on tomorrow. Let's go to our Abuja studio. That's the confirmation of the Group A fixtures. Niger versus Nigeria, while Burundi will take on South Africa. The South Africans, when they hear or see Nigeria coming, they just tight, they just tight in everything that they have around them and say, no, not Nigeria anymore. I love the competition, so we need to sit up and do more for our football. Uh, John Obu uh, led Nigeria to the 2011 and 2013 FIFA on the 20 World Cup. He's standing by in our Abuja studio to talk to us as regards the on the 20 AFCON. Good evening, Coach Obu. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Uh, good evening, Austin, and good evening to every other listener. It's good to have you join us on the program. Let's begin this way. Um, what's your take so far as regards the Flying Eagles at the, the under-20 AFCON? Uh, well, I, I really want to uh, believe that uh, Paul knows uh, why he has to pick up the job on, of under-20 because uh, it is a sort of... Uh, uh, a job that you are preparing the players that can play straight to uh, the Super Eagles. Mm. So I want, to, I want him to really concentrate on thinking about that. Unfortunately, we belong to where uh, trophies are very important to Nigerians when it has to do with uh, youth uh, uh, ages. But I think the most important thing is for him to actually build a team that will have to give us a uh, more number of players in the Super Eagles. I still want to believe that uh, I still want to believe that they will qualify. Uh, if only they will remove this idea of uh, the host countries because it doesn't, it doesn't work at that level. Host countries don't work at international levels because I remembered I lost my match against uh, 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 Switzerland in Nigeria when we hosted the Under-17 World Cup. Mm -hmm. If host countries work the way people think about that, I think I should have won my, my, my game in Nigeria here. Mm. So they don't have to think about host country or no host country. They just have to go and play their game. Coach, I, I love the way you, you've started this, this um, conversation. But will you blame Coach Paul Aigbogu? The win at all cost mentality is gradually eating into our football. So when a coach has a team in the under-17 and the under-20, and it's supposed to be for developmental purpose, and everybody's just saying, just go out there, win, 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 win. Isn't that a problem? Yeah, definitely it's going to be a problem, but you don't have to allow that to influence your preparations and your philosophy when you're taking up these two teams. I remember when I, when I was taking on the 17, I, was, I had a meeting with, uh, with uh, Ugujovi and uh, uh, Lulu, even with uh, Amaz Uche William, they told me what they actually needed. And I had to cue it into my own philosophy. That is to say, we need players that you can select to be able to represent us at least in, under, uh, in, uh, in, in the Super Eagles. And which I, I really had to put my, my philosophy uh, in line with theirs. While I was working to see the possibility of achieving that aim, I was also looking for uh, the trophy which Nigerians are so much interested in. So it is very, very important you match these two at the same time to make sure that you achieve your, your success. Mm, sounds good. Let's go to uh, the play itself in Group A. Nigeria started beating Burundi 2-0. They played goalless against South Africa. They will play Niger tomorrow. Uh, coach, so far with what you've seen, are, are you pleased with the performance of the Flying Eagles? Uh, well, what can you say? I wouldn't say I'm not pleased because that is their first test of that uh, level of, uh, of uh, 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 the game in, in their career. Mm. Unlike my own, where I had a lot of players from under-17 who had uh, an exposure from under-17 World Cup and graduated into 
under 20. And so it was a sort of uh, an easy sell for me because we have all already come uh, a long way. Uh, we've worked together and we now understand what World Cup is all about and what African Championship is all about. You see, it is very, very difficult to play under 20 because in under 20, you can see some players graduating from there straight into, uh, the, uh, in, into their uh, uh, national team, uh, senior uh, uh, team. A youth league, we, ac we accept that. But we don't even have the clubs turning out young players. Mm. In some parts of Europe, Turning out young players is a way some clubs of make course. money. Here, it doesn't work that Barcelona way. Barcelona goes to the team, team B and says, what is doing? What is awesome? Zero. Come, that was where Fabri just came yes. out. That was where Pedro, Messi Busquets, came out from. Busquets, Messi, you know, so Iniesta, all of them. You know it goes on and on. Yeah. So, but we don't have the same thing here. So really, mm. if they crash out tomorrow, there is really not a lot for these kids to fall back to. Mm. Now, the chances of them getting moves abroad is even... It's been hot because if they don't play at the World Youth yeah. Championship, international scouts so won't come to look at them. What I'm trying to say so yes, there is a pressure, but I think the kind of pressure they shouldn't have is a win at all cost pressure. Yeah. I think we should have it in a different light entirely, which is usually not what we have. Because the honest truth is, Austin, if they crash out, there is nothing to fall back for, fall back on in Nigeria to come doing the mm. league. Nothing. Mm. We have very few exceptional cases of yeah. 18, 19 year olds playing in the league. Very few. Yeah. It's not a norm. I agree. I totally agree with you. Let me take some, uh, some of your, your reactions on social media as regards Coach John Obu's uh, conversation. Net Blaster says, just like Coach Obu rightly said, um, this stage should be for development, but it can be measurable through success caps with tournament wins. Uh, routing for them tomorrow, routing for them tomorrow to down the host, DJ and secure yeah, a should. spot to the World Cup. They should. They should, they should do that. Uh, Adams, Jesse, uh, says, um, Kochobu is very correct with his analysis. Uh, the under-20 is meant to be a developmental setup, and they shouldn't be put under any undue pressure based on the must-win syndrome to deliver. And that's why I'm saying it's for all of us. The grassroots at that place is very delicate. So parents, some parents will say, this is your opportunity. Oh, don't go and embarrass us. Oh, you want win, 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 win. Some coaches, uh, agents, they are already looking at them for Europe movement. So a lot of us need to also come back and realize that we are just doing this uh, for development. And if we put that in mind, the lads will be relaxed. They will do their thing and they will excel. Let's talk about uh, some of the matches played today in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Match Day 7. Interesting. Look. I've been calling you, inviting you, say, walk with us on this journey. Nigerian foot League football is getting better. I love it, and you will love it. We've been having away wins. So before people say, oh, the league is where people don't get to win away. No. Uh, today, Wikitoris defeated Aimba by two goals to one. Niger Tornadoes won, Sunshine Stars zero. That's in Group A. A lot of good things happening in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Look at who is trying to bounce back. And that's the result from today. Nasara United defeated Play 2 United 2 1. But Aqua United, and they said no, after that um, brilliant display against Goran, they needed to sustain the momentum. And Tolu, this win is very vital for their survival. Yes, uh, maybe about two wins out of two. Mm. Uh, two, uh, two clean back sheets. To back, yeah. So it's good for Aqua United to bounce back. Um, let's hope it's not too late for them. I think I don't even think it's too late because mm. majority of the teams in the group have faltered a lot also. Pick up more wins, get one or two more wins away from home, and they are back uh, in, in reckoning. So let's see. Let's see how it goes for Aqua United. Too mm. early to call. We've seen one or two teams, uh, teams pick away wins this season. And... Really, it doesn't put any of them at the top of the of the league yet mm -hmm. or of the group. For Aqua United, hopefully, it is not too late for them. They are quality side with yeah. quality players. Yeah. We are looking at the representation of the country next year in, in, on the continent. So it will be good to see a quality side there. Mm -hmm. However, the work is here, yeah. and they have to do it. So are you surprised we um, aim back couldn't get something out of Wiki Tourist? Well, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Anybody is not one who that you can really bank on to go away from home and always deliver. No, I'm not surprised. Look at how they lost against uh, Enugu Rangers mm. a couple of weeks ago. I'm not surprised. So when anybody went away from home, it's a bonus. But it is not a norm. It's an exception. Mm. Mm. But we just give them some respect. Cause 
uh, they are in back. Uh, so that's it. Tomorrow action, more action in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Katsina United will host Bendel Insurance. Bendel Insurance got their first win of the season after after beating uh, Lobby Stars. So that that's good uh, motivation for them. Yeah. And there's just buzz around Bendel Insurance now. So let's see what they can do at Katsina United. Yes, um, Bendel have. I think they began well uh, with the draw against Rainbow Stars, and subsequently, yeah, they lost at home mm -hmm. also, but. Let's see what they can do. Let, let's see how they can uh, keep up with the handle the pressure of being back in the league because their home fans will put a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. They haven't been in the league in a long while. Yeah, so that pressure will be on them. Mm. Let's see how they can cope with it. It will be difficult. And it's coming at a time when it's, the league is tougher than know, every other know, year. So it will be really yes. difficult for better insurance, but hey. It's, it's football. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, more talks as regards the Nigeria Professional Football League, and then I'll read more of your messages. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us.